In this video, I'm going to talk about solving for the new volume of a cell after it readjusts to a change in the concentration of the surrounding solutes. So let's look at a situation here where we've got a cell happily sitting in some concentration of solution. Say it has a concentration of 250 millimolar of solutes. And this cell has a volume, we'll say a thousand micrometers cubed. And if this cell is happily sitting there, it's not swelling, it's not shrinking, that's because it's in equilibrium with its surroundings. So it's in an isotonic solution. So the flow of water into the cell is equal to the flow of water out of the cell. And that's going to be the case if the concentration of solutes inside of the cell equals the concentration outside of the cell. Then let's say we change the concentration, maybe by adding water to the surrounding solution. So what's going to happen in this case? So if I add water to the solution, is my concentration going to go up or is it going to go down? I'm adding water to the solution, so I'm diluting it. So I'm making that concentration go down. Let's say it went down to 200 millimolar. What's going to happen to our cell? So we were here in an isotonic situation over here where my flow in and out was the same. But now that I've decreased the concentration outside, I put my cell in a hypotonic solution. So the flow of water in is going to be greater. And the net flow of water is going to be into the cell, causing it to swell until equilibrium is established again. So until we come back to this case where the flow of water in and out is the same. So our cell is going to swell, provided it doesn't burst first until it's in an isotonic solution, so the flow of water in and out is the same. If I'm in an isotonic solution, it means my concentration in here equals the outside. And so now I'm asking what the new volume of this cell is now that it's swollen. And I'm going to take a minute to label my concentration over here before I added that water as C1 and V1, and here after I added that water and my cell swelled up to C2 and V2. So how am I going to find V2? I'm going to rely on something. So the water in my cell is changing. I have a net influx of water into my cell to cause it to swell, and the concentration of solutes inside of my cell is changing because I'm diluting those solutes. What isn't changing is the number of solutes. The number of solutes stuck in the cell over here is the same as the number of solutes stuck in the cell over here. And it turns out that we have what we need to find this number of solutes. So it's the concentration times the volume. Let's remind ourselves of why that is. So remember that the concentration is the number of solutes divided by the volume. So if I multiply that by the volume, what I end up with is the number of solutes in my cell. So I can use that to say the number of solutes in my cell at the beginning, C1 times V1, is going to equal the number of solutes in my cell at the end, C2 times V2. Because I'm looking for V2, I'm going to rearrange this so that I have V2 on one side. So I'm going to divide both sides by C2. Let's stop for a moment and make sure that my math makes sense. So if my concentration goes up, so let's say I add salt to this solution, if my concentration goes up, then my cell is going to shrink from being in a hypertonic solution. So that makes sense, because if this number goes up, 
this whole number is going to go down. My volume is going to decrease. Okay, that makes sense. And if my concentration goes down, like the situation we have here, then this number is going to get bigger. In other words, my cell is going to swell. So that makes sense. In that case, let's proceed forward. So using the numbers for our case, we have C1, 250 millimolar, times V1, our original volume of our cell, 1,000 micrometers cubed, divided by C2, the concentration here at the end, so 200 millimolar. All right, and from here on, it's just crunching the numbers. So I'm going to go and play some unit magic and cancel out my units. And also I see I've got a zero here on both of these. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out that factor of 10. Then notice 25 is 5 times 5 and 20 is 4 times 5. So this is the same as saying 5 over 4. And of course I still have to keep my 1,000 micrometers cubed. And I do the calculation that I know 5 fourths is 1.25 because here's my four quarters and then I've got a quarter left over just like 25 cents times that thousand micrometers cubed. And then finally do the last step and find my final volume.